Good. Sorry. Okay. So I am Christine, the RV mama of four, and I am so glad that y'all are here. Tara, who you can also see with the fabulous map behind her, and Chris, who is last May in camping, are both going to be speaking. Chris will be tomorrow and Tara on Wednesday. So that's why it's the whole summer setup summit, because we each have different things that we wanted to share with y'all. And I know you guys are going to learn so much. So tonight, I really wanted to introduce you to why you should start RVing. What are the benefits? Why would you want to do it? Can you do it? Do you have to have a certain budget? Do you have to be a certain age? Well, I'm here to share all of these things with you. Tara is going to be talking on Wednesday, sorry, I went a little out of order, about how to earn passive income so that you can support your RV lifestyle. So she has all kinds of tips and tricks, and she's going to teach us those. And you guys, I am so excited to learn myself. We try to choose speakers that we can each learn from each other as well. And she is an amazing woman that is super smart, and she pays for her RV lifestyle by using her own techniques and tips. Chris with Last Man Camping, y'all, he has all different kinds of backgrounds. He is a such a cool guy to learn from. He has an engineering background and he'll be able to share more with you about it. But because of that, he is very good at maintenance, DIY, and things like that that I am not good at. So I can't wait to learn some of that because we are about to go full-time RVing and I need to know all of that as well. So, all right, let's go. So I'm going to introduce my family because... Well, first, let me just tell you what we're going to embrace the RV lifestyle today so we can have unforgettable memories tomorrow. That is a great life motto for us RVers. Here's my family in usual fashion. I kind of had to cut one person off on the end because they're always inviting friends over. So the little head in the end is just a friend. I don't actually have five kids and it's hard to get all of us together, but that does not hold me back from RVing. We just RV with whoever is free and available. So my kids are 10, 12, 16, and 18, and we actually started RVing eight and a half years ago. So my sister called me up. I should have put a picture of her in there. My sister called me up on the phone and she said, I'm buying an RV for only $180 a month. And I was like, what? So a little bit of sibling rivalry going on. I'm like, well, she has an RV. I need an RV, right? You know, I'm like the kid, I had always, I had four siblings as well. And we had always tent camped growing up. I always got the wet side of the tent because I'd want to be on the far ends. So nobody stepped on my, you know, stepped on my sleeping bag. Um, and so she's like, yeah, that we've done this way too long. She's like, we're going to go travel around the country and follow our kids sports. So I thought, okay, that sounds, that sounds like a great idea. So I convinced my husband on the right there that we too needed an RV. We knew nothing about RVing, but we thought it was just going to be easy and fun. So he said, okay, you go find the RV, you negotiate the deal. He's a lawyer and he's always working. So I thought, okay. So I dropped the kids off at school. I drove a literally just a couple hours away, went looking all over and I ended up finding our and purchasing our first RV, which we call breakdown Betsy. Little did we know it was our tow vehicle. That is what always caused this um, thing to break down. So here's my first RV. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> It was used and it was $16,000. And I always like to say that it was the cost of dinner out in Texas, $150 a month for a family of six. So on any budget, y'all, you can RV. That's one of the things that in RV world, they allow you to extend your payment out a lot farther than you do a regular budget. Um, and I just wanted to let you know, if you need to, if you can't see the pictures, go to speaker view, just in case you're having difficulties, because you have to see Breakdown Betsy. And you can put in the chat if you're having any problems because Chris and Tara are really good at tech and they can direct you. <laughs> um, so anyway, the first year, my husband ended up driving my RV all over the state because when we pulled out of that parking lot after buying it at the RV, it is like having a baby. You have the baby and they're like, here you go. Good luck. See ya. <laughs> there's not a, there's not a lot. There's not a manual. They give you a little hour rundown. And then all of a sudden you're on your own. So I started driving it out of the parking lot. And I literally remember screaming. I was like, oh my gosh, it doesn't stop. I can't drive this thing. I'm freaking out. I pull over. And my husband was like, uh, okay, I'll take over. He had never driven an RV either. So that was it. I was done. I was like, nope, honey, you are driving the RV from here on out. So for that first year, we would go almost to this, we would go to the thousand trails in Lake Conroe in Texas, and he would drive it up an hour away, unhook it, set it up and leave. Come to find out he didn't really like camping very much. And he also 
um, in addition to not liking camping, he works a lot because he was a lawyer. So I started to feel guilty because I was like, well, one, we can really only go an hour away because that's about all we can like justify for my husband just, you know, doing this every weekend. And so two, I thought, you know what, I need to pull up my big girl panties because I want to get out of Texas. Like once you start RVing, you get the, you get the bug to go travel. So since summer was just around the corner, I decided that it was time to hit the road in the RV with the kids on my own. And that's how I'm the RV mama for today, all because of this dream and this vision that I had to get and go travel more. So my daughter was a dancer and she got a lot of scholarships. They were in Utah, Las Vegas, California. And so I thought, oh, great. Okay. I'm going to go follow all of her scholarships. That's what we're going to do. And so I had this great brand new truck. You can see it was new and I was so excited. They told me it was going to pull my RV and we ended up doing fabulous until we hit Utah. How many of y'all put in the chat if you've ever RV'd or driven through Utah? Because it is not easy. All right, Tara, who's in the chat? Who's telling us they've driven through the, the depths of Utah? You have? Yeah, we well, I haven't. I I'm not, I don't have the guts that you do to actually tell myself. So my husband does all the telling for us. <laughs> so so going through Utah is rough, y'all. Colorado <laughs> has round roads like that through the mountains. Utah's like roller coaster straight up. So my RV, as we're driving up, it, it was about 103 degrees at nine in the morning. All of a sudden it started flashing power failure. Power failure. And I was like, oh boy, this cannot be good. So I start screaming because I tend to panic a little bit. And I'm like, kids, we're going to see Jesus. So we're going to die. Hang on. I don't know what to do when your new truck says power failure. And so of course they start panicking. My husband always tells me if you could ever calm down. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not really my personality. So um, we are trying to get up this hill. And we had so many camping angels, as we called them, that helped us out along the way. Um, so the first was a couple we just literally pulled over. There happened to be a viewpoint. We pull over and we're like all like panicking. The kids don't even want to see the view. I don't care about the view. We're just like, what do we do with power failure? So these people said, oh, well, we'll follow you. We don't move into our apartment for two days. We'll just follow you. Go like 45. So for like four hours, we went 45. We made it without saying power failure again. The next morning we wake up power failure. Like you couldn't beat the heat and the roads in Utah. So my daughter panics and she calls the only thing that was on the roadside and it was a camel safari. Okay. We're literally around Labor Day weekend. And, um, they answer after about five calls, she just kept calling them back. And they're like, hi, we don't open until October, like, you know, a month and a half from now a month. And my daughter's like, no, 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 we are stranded on the side of the road and we need help. So the guy goes, okay, I'm going to turn your day around. He's like, I'm going to show you the camel safari. So he comes and he picks us up in his Jeep. And I always tell the kids, don't do what mom does. Okay. Just do what I tell you to do. Don't do what I actually do. And so then he literally picks us up. We give him like the once over. I'm like, yep, you look safe. Okay, kids get in the car. I'm like texting my mom where we are in case you have to call the police. You know, this is where we're at. So anyway, he takes us to the camel safari and gave the kids a whole Jeep tour. They got to do all these things. That was the beginning of the summer where I realized RVing is not for the faint of heart and it's not easy, especially when you're traveling solo. So this actually was what prompted me. Um, this is what actually prompted me to, um, just begin my whole RV mama adventure of four journey. So what we ended up doing was we just kept going to California, but we had a couple more stories along the way to get there after power failure. We actually got in the car with somebody else and turns out he had a shotgun on the floor because, oh yeah, I forgot about that when we got the kids out, but he took my truck and RV and he drove it and he tossed me the keys to his. So I thought, well, he's not going to run off with it. Is his truck. He just gave me the keys to his. So anyway, we have all kinds of crazy adventures from that first summer, but we didn't quit. And that's why I'm here to help y'all not have to go through what I went through because there is no rule book. There's no manual of how to do this the right way. But we have learned so many historical and scientific facts from the places we've been blessed to visit, y'all. We just created the time to learn and explore and relax and chase our kids' dreams and their scholarships. So when we finally got to Nevada, I ended up getting a new truck. 
brand new truck to replace my other brand new truck. But this one was a Dodge Ram 2500. They still called it Dodge back then. And it was fabulous. I bought it in Las Vegas. Uh, the 60,000 was not in the camping budget. My husband was thrilled when I had to call and tell him about that. But you guys, that was the truck that I had all the way through up until about a month ago. So I'm going to show you if this will allow me. Why is it not going to the next slide? Oh, there it goes. Um, RVing will give you the opportunity to create memories. It doesn't matter if you're going solo, if you're going with your kids, if you're going with your husband, I've done it all. I've done all those things and I love it so much every time. We have continued to RV every single summer with the kids after that summer that we'll all never forget. And no other summer has gone like that. Once I got my truck, my 2,500 and our second RV s'mores, things have gone a lot smoother. But to take more weekend and impromptu trips than I can even count. We've explored from coast to coast. I've taken the kids everywhere west of Colorado, except for Idaho and Washington. And last summer, I chased my son's film dream, and we went to the East Coast and traveled all up and down the East Coast. We actually even spent two winters where we stayed at a stay and play campsite where we in, near Breckenridge, Colorado, where my kids would ski on the weekends and we would just stay in the RV. Can you see the picture in the middle with the red sweatshirt? He's shooting BB guns at, I don't know what. They just like to shoot BB guns. Um, and actually this was also the picture on the right where they're dying Easter eggs. That was also winter camping. You guys, it was about 11 degrees there, pretty much all winter. And we didn't even have water. So that means no dishes, no toilet, no showers. It didn't matter. They had a bathhouse with a kitchen, washer if we needed it, you know, toilets, all of that. Like we just had a camping potty in the RV and you can tell from their faces, they did not care. And I didn't care. It really wasn't a big deal. If this is something that you want to do to get out and explore nature and go see all the beautiful places that you would not otherwise have the opportunity to do, don't let any of these things hold you back. Just get prepared, know what you need to, you know, what it takes to do it in advance. And you won't run into a lot of the same errors that a lot of us that just jump out with, you know, two feet first to go through. So I started the RV Mama of Four Adventure and Community because I wanted to teach women and men that want to learn how to RV, how to gain the confidence, skills, and knowledge that they need to venture out and go explore and making memories one mile at a time. So my goal is actually to help you gain the confidence, knowledge, and skills that you need to purchase, drive, and set up your RV from start to finish. I want you all to be able to create the life that you desire by connecting with nature, spending quality time with your family, your kids, your pets, whatever the case may be, without the distractions of a busy life. And I know we can all relate to the last one because life is just getting busier by the moment. And I also want you guys to know this is so important to me. Don't give up on your dreams. Traveling solo or with your kids Maybe one of the scariest, most liberating, life-changing experiences that you will ever go through. You guys, that first summer, my kids still talk about. I think I could write a book about all of the things that we did that I was like, don't do what mom's doing. As we're, you know, all of these things. But you guys, I didn't quit. And the things that we saw that summer, we saw, you know, Joshua Tree Park and we saw the Grand Canyon. We got to go to Yellowstone. All of these things that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do because we didn't give up. So I would encourage you, don't let life pass you by while worrying what could go wrong. Things will go wrong. I am not here to tell you that it's easy and nothing will go wrong. Just today, we got I brought home the brand new RV and my husband broke the key in the door by accident. It happens. Thank goodness we had a spare, right? Well, I've actually, that same summer trip, um, I didn't have a spare. And we had a key that broke and we had to get the whole door handle fell off. And we had to get a mobile technician out to help us. But you know what? It's okay. That's the kind of stuff that happens that you live and you learn. And that's one of the things that Chris will probably share with you. What do you do in those moments of desperation? And how do you learn some DIY tips? You can RV on your own with your kids or with your spouse at any age or stage in life. So what are some of the benefits? Oops. There you go. See that pretty slide? I was supposed to go to the next page. And just so you guys know, if you stay until the very end, I actually do have a special bonus for you guys. So I hope that you can stay until the end because I'm so excited to share with you. So one of the first benefits of RVing that I want to share with you guys is just the freedom of travel. You get to experience the freedom to travel at your own pace, and you can explore so many different destinations without having a specific schedule or itinerary. I know Tara and I like to travel like this. Some people like to be planned, 
I, my husband calls me a nomad. My kids call me a free spirit. If you tell me you were going somewhere, I might just meet you there tomorrow. Um, that's just the way I roll. I keep my RV packed, my truck packed all summer. And the kids know, like we often, we've even actually gone grocery shopping at gas stations along the way. And it just is, what is this? I'm like, look for the yogurt, look for the granola, the sushi, let's find a King Supers gas station, you know, and that's how we roll sometimes. But this is how it all began for me. I did not want to be tied down to my husband's schedule and he didn't like camping. So between all of those things, I wanted to be able to experience this freedom of travel. I also love to have the ability to change plans spontaneously. You guys, if you cancel an RV reservation, they'll often let you come back at another time. If you cancel it even up to seven days prior, some day, some places, even 24 to 48 hours, they don't charge you. It's not like a lot of hotels that you're locked into with a big, you know, itinerary. Um, and a lot of times you, you get a $10 fee. It's very minimal. Sometimes it'll be a little more, but that's been my experience. Um, the ability to change plans spontaneously and just go find different routes and new discoveries along the way was huge for me. During COVID, we had just sold our house three weeks before COVID hit, not knowing it was coming to the U.S. So we hadn't even found a new house yet. And I, when COVID hit and they started shutting things down, I thought I am not going to be tied down like this. I just can't because we don't have a house. So we would be living with my parents who I love, but they were retired and I homeschool four kids. That's a lot of people home with COVID, you know, that was already a crazy time. So I said, we're just going to go full-time RVing. We're just going to go travel. And that's what we're going to do. So I took the kids by myself full-timing and we went and spent a month in Colorado Springs. And as COVID started to get worse and things weren't opening up, we went on to Canyon City, which I don't know. Okay. Put in the chat, who's been to Canyon City and Tara will have to jump in and report Canyon city, Colorado, y'all. It is literally like it is boondocking central. And you are, if you want to experience nature and you really want to be in the midst of all of it, you have to go there. So we became the full, one of the full timing families that they let stay there. And we met friends there that I like, I can't even describe to you the, how cool they were. They would bring us fish they would bring us donuts. They would do all these different things. And we ended up meeting up with them later. And I have some pictures of them later on in the slideshow it, because we just made such good friends that we followed them around the country. Okay. Put in the chat, Tara, do we have anybody that's been to Canyon city? Well, Nobody. Yet, I know my, my sister Alice Canyon. So I think, I think that might have to go on our list. Yes. It is a cool place. Well, we ended up um, also meeting up with my friend, I saw on Facebook, my best friend I hadn't seen in 10 years. And I said, she wrote on Facebook that they were going to Moab. So I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen her in like 10, 15 years. Like, let's go to Moab. So we hopped in the trailer and off we went to Moab. And you guys, we picked up like we had never, like we had never left. It was the coolest thing ever. And then a week two weeks, three weeks pass, And she's still on the road. And she's like, we're going to Yellowstone on Facebook. So I'm like, yes, we're going to Yellowstone. So we met up with her again. Um, and I had somebody just say that Jody went to Canyon city, but not in the RV Jody post in the chat, what Canyon city was like for you. So others know, since you and I are the only ones that apparently know about Canyon city, because Tara wants to come out and join us. So she might be the one to hit the road and come meet us out here, but you'll have to report what Jody says. Cause I'm sorry. I can't see the chat. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to talk with y'all about is the flexibility and accommodations. So RVing provides the flexibility to just choose different campsites and RV parks based on your personal preference. All right, you guys have to put in the chat, all my campers, do you like to camp at KOAs where you have full hookups, which is more like glamping, or do you like to boondock, which means that you don't have hookups and you're literally in the middle of nowhere and it's a lot harder. Or do you like to sleep at Walmart? I mean, sometimes I like to sleep at Walmart too. So put in the chat if you've RV'd before or where you think you would like. So we've got glamping and um, Jody said Canyon City is gorgeous. Full hookups for Tara and Jen. Yes, I love that. So when I first started camping until last year, y'all, so my first seven years of camping, we did full hookups. And, you know, occasionally the Walmart and the side of the road, that was fine that, you know, the gas stations, but, um, that is one of the things that this provides you, this lifestyle provides you. So, um, 
one of the things in, oh, okay. So one of the, the other things that it allows you to do is you can choose if you want to be by the lake, national park or vibrant city. So I thought before I started camping that national parks were going to be so boring. So my first couple of years RVing, I didn't go to national parks. I was like, that is so boring. And then during COVID, the national parks were still open. <laughs> And I'm like looking for things to do during COVID. And they actually gave fourth graders a free pass. All right, put in the chat if you have a fourth grader, because you can get, I will, I will tell you how to get a free pass. And it covers everybody in your car. So you can even have grandma in the back of the truck and she's free too. We would fit as many people as we could. We used that because they extended it. So we actually got it for two years. And by then I had another fourth grader. So we've gotten a lot of free passes. But the thing that I am here to share with you guys is if you have not gone to a national park, you have to put it on your bucket list. I have taken my kids to Yellowstone and Grand Canyon five to six times. My poor husband has never been. Maybe he'll get to go now that now that he he's going to be RVing with us some. Um, I have taken, if you ask any of my kids, what is your favorite RV trip? They will tell you that it's Glacier National Park. And so I was so glad that I got past my thing of, oh, national parks must be boring um, because they, you can't describe them. You can't take pictures of, from, of them because they're always so three-dimensional. Every one of them is so different. So whatever you guys do, you have to add these to your bucket list. Um, and I would recommend that you do it RVing because it just creates such a different experience than if you're in a hotel and getting up and doing it that way. So another is... Um, Oh, I had one more short story to share with you. Actually, for Mother's Day, we'll go back one quick time. Avoid the limitations of hotel so that you can live in your own space wherever you go. Okay, for Mother's Day, my daughter had a dance competition and I had to pay for her to stay at a hotel because that's what you do when you go to a dance competition. And I knew that they had a huge parking lot out back. And I thought, it's Mother's Day, so I'm going to stay in my RV. And she's like, you can't tell anyone. This is so embarrassing. Why would you want to do that? Just stay in the hotel. I'm like, no. So I paid for her to stay in the hotel with her friend and I called them and they're like, oh yeah. So it was me and literally the semi-truck driver that was housing all of the dance equipment. And we stayed out there for three days in the back parking lot separate. And um, I just walked, you know, the 10 feet inside. And I did not tell anybody this until the following year because she swore me to secrecy that I was sleeping in the RV in the parking lot while she was in the hotel. But you guys, it was so nice. I had my robe, my coffee, my slippers, a glass of wine, my own bed and pillow that I knew nobody had slept in. And I actually, because I have two batteries in my RV, I didn't even need a generator or hookups. I was able to just go off the battery for two days. Now I don't recommend that you need to join my membership and I'll tell you why, but I had tested it out and I have two batteries, which is unusual. Uh, most campers have one and you would not be able to go that long. Um, so, okay. The next thing is connecting with nature. Can y'all see my slides? I'll have to give me a thumbs up. You can see I'm Tara. You guys, this like makes me happy just looking at my own pictures because <laughs> I have so many good memories with my kids. And I just hope that you guys can capture this vision of what this could be for you and your family. So we have found so many places we never would have known about if we weren't RVing. It allows you to connect with nature, which I didn't even know I wanted to connect with nature. I mean, people said that before. I'd be like, what are you, a hippie? No, you don't have to be a hippie. Like, look at this. This is not hippie. And you can be a hippie too, but like, this is just beautiful. This is all in Uray. So those people that we met, I don't know if Melanie's on the phone call or not, but um, we met them during COVID. They full-timed across from us and we kept in touch with them and I still do. And they've been full-timing for five years. And they said it was like one of the best things they've ever done. They gave up everything just like we're doing. Big house, horse barn, all kinds of things. But we chased them. They said, come to you, Ray. So the, in the picture, the guy with the t-shirt with Caden, that's not his dad. That's John. That, that's one of our friends. We have lots of RV friends that, that act like dad too. Um, and they actually said, come meet with us. So he is an expert Jeep. Like, I don't even know what you call it. Like he literally drives expert tours in his Jeep. We were kind of scared because I'm like, I've never done a beginner tour in a Jeep. Like we have to jump to expert. This is what we got to see because we went with him. You cannot go hire a tour guide to take you the places that our friend took. They took the doors off the Jeep. They took the roof off. And I think that that picture didn't make it in. But you guys, if you want to see my Jeep picture, go to my Facebook page, um, RV Mama of Four, because it is, there's pictures of John with the Jeep. And we had to climb over these rocks with the Jeep. We looked down below in canyons and we saw like Jeep flipped over, but John was a great driver. When we got to the very top of that, we were able to have a picnic. We had the 
the air conditioner going on at the bottom and the heat going on at the top. I kid you not. This is Colorado. It's like Utah. Um, so it, it's just phenomenal. If you guys can just capture this vision of I'm doing this by myself. The only thing that will hold you back, you guys, is fear. And there is no reason for that. That's why I have this membership to walk you through it because I want, like, I'm getting chills right now, just thinking about other people capturing this vision. And I know that Tara and Chris have this vision too. And each of them have a different situation. We, it doesn't, we don't have to look the same. We can have that same vision and then just go out and do, you know, what we have in our minds to do. Um, so the next thing that I want to show you is quality family time. So our being just provides an opportunity for families just to really spend quality time together away from distractions. I am always trying to get away from my house, which is why we are actually going full-time RVing. My, our, my new RV is right out front on Friday. How many days is that? I got to get out of this house in like four days, but we're not thinking about that. But you don't have to go full-time RVing. Tara will share with you, they go half a year because she also likes her Florida weather. And so she'll share with you that that's, that's the, you know, the choice that they've made for that journey. And Chris will share with you that his wife does not want to go full-time RVing. They have little babies crawling around. You might get to see them in the, in the, um, in the Zoom call on tomorrow on Tuesday. But you know what? That does not hold them back from being weekend warriors. And we were weekend warriors all the way up until this Thursday. So that picture on the left, my son with his crab legs, it was his birthday. And he was so excited. We just took off on a whim to Arizona for spring break. And he's like, wait, my birthday, we're going to be in the RV. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a blast. If we were at home, what are you going to do? Jump on a bouncy house. We've done that for like 10 years. So anyway, it was so much fun. And in the middle picture, the kids and I, this is where we were in Glacier National Park, and we had to actually hike back to get to that. We, I was all scared in Glacier, if I'm being honest, there's like bear signs everywhere. We had bear bell, bear spray. We had all the bear things, right? But I still was a little bit nervous about like getting attacked by a bear. So we pull up to this hiking trail and we see this family, one family. I go running up to them. I'm like, kids, quick, grab your water, hurry. We gotta go, we gotta go see if we can go with them. So I go over and it was like a family with their teenage kids. And I was like, Hey, nice to meet you. Can we hike with you? <laughs> and they're like, sure. Come on. We spent the entire day with them. Y'all. And this guy came running out. He's like, we saw a bear. So now of course I'm like, so glad that I found these random strangers. We had the best time with them and they took pictures of us and we were hiking and it was hard and it was so fun. And we bonded with them. Um, it was an amazing experience. And the picture on the right that's my oldest son. When I told you that we do a stay and play in Breckenridge and we stay there from October to April, not, the, not all the time. We just go up to go skiing on the weekends. That was he and I snowshoeing on Hoosier Pass. And he said, mom, I really like RVing with just you. So I took a whole weekend and I RVed with just him. We did sleigh rides. We didn't get to go dog sledding. That's on my list, y'all. Like this year I'm going dog sledding in Colorado, but we did snowshoeing and all of these other things. And you can make it happen on any budget. You really can. I promise you there are ways. And we talk a lot about that in the membership. How do you do this on any budget? Um, so let me go to my next slide here. Okay. Um, social connections. Oops, did I miss one? Hold on. Let me see which one's next. Um, well, okay, let me just add one more thing in here. One of the things that I really love about this is that we don't have any devices except for when driving. I didn't even hook up the cable. I'm like, I, kids, I, I don't know how. And they know I'm very non-technological. So they believe me. They're like, yeah, mom probably can't figure it out. Really? You just plug in a cord, but it's okay. Um, so we, we, we do nightly campfires. I keep checkers set up outside all the time. Every time we go camping, the kids will wake me up to play chess and we love to cook over the fire. The kids will say, mom, you don't have to put cook two meals over the fire. We can't ever get anywhere. I'm like, okay, I'll do one, but I love cooking over the fire because I love the smell. I just love everything about it. Um, so the next one is social connections. You guys, a lot of people are afraid that either, you know, their kids are going to miss out or you're going to miss out if you're on the road, because who are you going to, who are you going to be friends with? And what kind of social connections do you have? This is not a concern. It's kind of like homeschooling. All right. Put in the chat who homeschools and has been asked that, um, you know, Oh, how are you going to socialize? Well, we get it all across because we get it from the homeschooling side and the RVing side. How are you going to socialize? You guys, we have so many people that we have met, um, just literally on the road and we follow them around the country. So um, on the left, that was Dylan. Um, when we made it up on that Jeep tour, I was telling you about the expert Jeep tour. That's actually a video. And he just decided to slide down an iceberg because Mr. John in the middle did. So Dylan did too. 
And this was an abandoned mine that we found in the middle on the Jeep tour. And John in the red pinkish t-shirt, you can see him. He loves abandoned mines. So he gave us a whole history tour while we were up there. And then in the back of their Jeep, they, they have like this whole like wine and cheese rack. And so they just like whipped it out and we had a picnic. We all contributed. So the one in the middle, I just met that day. See, I told you, we're always getting in the car with other people. So we just met him that day, but John already knew him. So he was like a friend, you know, if somebody knows somebody, they're already my friend. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, they're my friend. I never met him, but yeah. And so we've actually um, tried to camp with them this summer. And I'm like, wait, what was their name again, Melanie? <laughs> it's been like two years, but it's okay because that's, that's just how our VARES roll. And so you can see on the right-hand side that we were, those were also all new friends and people that we made like five minutes before. Um, so let's see, we had one last story about that. We had pulled into, and we had pulled into a, um, campground. And before I could even get out, they had this beautiful Tiffin. It looks just like the one in the picture. That's Melanie and John's that, that, um, that red huge motorhome. These people have the same one. They came running out and they said, do you want to come to happy hour? I literally hadn't even backed it in. And I know Tara can relate to this because she and I talk about people will watch you back and in to see if they want to be your friend or they want to help you out or they want to laugh at you or whatever. You know, it's like a big, that's what we do for fun. You know, watch people back in. So anyway, they I hadn't even backed in. They're like, come on over for five minutes. It'll only take you five minutes to set up. So we go over, you guys, they had shrimp cocktail, wine, a movie playing for the kids. They decided that since it was Halloween, they were going to have the kids decorate like Halloween t-shirts. They're like spray painting, like, you know, like it was insanity. And I, we didn't know them. They were right next to us. And we kept in touch with them for months. Um, so put in the chat, you guys, if you have ever kept in touch with any camping friends that you have met. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, Tara's going to have to tell me. Tara, what do we have going on in the chat here? Well, I've definitely kept in touch with some campground friends, or I've met some online friends and then camped with them, like uh, my friend Trish, that is a few campers on the other side. She was my online friend, and we were just both being in the same city. So we just, now she's my wow. friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You guys have so many friends in the RVing community. It's kind of like, I always compare it to when you were growing up and your parents sent you out till 9 p.m. That's like the RVing community. Like everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody's on vacation. It's very stress-free other than dealing with the RV. But <laughs> that's why you can join my membership because I'm here to help you guys out. And I'm truly, truly passionate. And that like, I just don't want people to have to learn it the hard way. You don't need to spend eight years learning all the tricks and things will still go wrong, but it helps to have that support system. Okay, so the next thing is stress reduction, reduction and relaxation. You guys, I am very busy homeschooling four kids with, and I, with one just graduating and just our lifestyle has always been this way. Hustle and bustle. I put in all the activities I can get and come to find out my husband told me like six months ago that that's why he doesn't like to RV with us. He goes, you never sit, you never relax. You're always trying to do the next activity, which he's right. I do. So I'm going to try to work on that. I'm going to try to let him sit a little bit, you know, but you can go either way. I know people that like to camp because they can take naps and read books. And we do sit at night. We always have a campfire every night. Like that's my sitting time. Once it's dark, all right, let's have our campfire. Um, but I can't describe to you that when you have nothing else to do, how relaxing that is. If I am in my house and if you could see behind me and around me with, you know, knowing we're moving out three days right now, it's just constant stress of, you know, like, well, how do I, I got to do laundry. I got to do dishes that, but when you're there, you can clean up that RV in five minutes flat. Um, literally I use one spray and I don't even get a mop bucket. I just use the Swiffer mop and throw that puppy out. I'm done. I'll clean the toilet before I use it done. Bathroom's clean. So that's it. Like no chores, no errands, no returns, nothing. It's just relaxing. So this is another really good way to just escape. If you're like me and you don't escape, if you're in your own home, some people are good at relaxing in their house. I'm not, I don't relax in my house. Um, and you can, um, like I said, this, so this picture, I think it was in Colorado, but look how beautiful that is. You guys, I was alone. I that's my 2,500 Ram truck and my new trailer s'mores. Now we have another new one, but we still own this one too. And, um, this is the one that I've spent the majority of my camping years with, with the kids. And look at that. It's so beautiful. It makes me so happy just looking at it. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to hear how many of y'all are going to go out and do this because I have big dreams for you guys. The other thing that it can really do is 
you get to focus on educational opportunities. It's because we homeschooled when COVID hit, we didn't really lose anything. We just went off to Canyon City and the only thing the kids didn't get to do to get to do was go on campus one day where they got to see their friends. So like our education wasn't impacted at all. We already had everything. It was like seamless as far as that went. We just went off. Um, now, I know that's not, you know, if you don't homeschool, that's totally fine. You can still choose to do educational places. There's an app called Atlas Obscura and maybe... Um, Sure, I can put that in the chat. It's spelled Atlas Obscura and it um, will allow you to find unique places in your area. So you just click search where you're at. You guys, there is so many cool places that you wouldn't, we've tried rabbit stew. We've gone to every winery and everything that you can imagine in class and the kit, you know, I, I just love all the educational stuff that you can do. Um, so this was actually in Glacier National Park. That's what the water looks like in Glacier. I know it looks like Hawaii. Jen, is that what your water looks like? If Cindy and Jen are in the chat, they're my Hawaii friends. They'll have to put, I don't know. I haven't been in like 10 years, but you guys, it was beautiful. It was freezing cold. They're all smiling. It was like 30, but <laughs> they were having fun. Okay. Let's see if this computer's going to cooperate. Um, okay. So one of the other things is just the memorable experiences, you guys. RVing has changed my life and everybody that I know now, when I go to my son's school parties, anywhere I go, people will talk to me about RVing men, women, they all know that it's so, I just, I can't, I can't like hold it in. You know, when you have something you're passionate about, you just can't hold it in. Well, that's RVing for me. And the reason why is because I have been able to spend so much time with my kids. It doesn't matter if you have kids. It doesn't matter if you're retired you will benefit from being able to create memories. I've had amazing trips that I've gone on by myself. I'm headed off to Texas on Sunday by myself to go be on the news um, in Texas. And I'm gonna actually be teaching three different reporters on the live news how to drive my RV. That'll be a little scary because they're driving my truck and my RV. But you know, I'm looking forward to that time alone to go to Texas too, as much as I love going with the kids too. Every RVing trip I get has different special memories that I create that I can keep in my mind. Um, you can share stories around the campfire. So on the left, this was our spring break trip and we travel pretty impromptu. Like we, we get to where we're going. And then I ask everybody there at the campground, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, what do you like? What do you do? I asked the camp host and that's how I plan my trip. So whatever they're all doing, that's what I do. And usually that's where I can get the best stuff. Now, if you're a planner and that gives you total anxiety, I can help you with that too. I have a lot of books. RV Life is a great trip planning app. Um, so I can help you with that too. But you guys, camping and RVing can fit your personality. The kids and I just like to off we go, but we, we understand that a lot of people have jobs and set times and they don't, or that's their personality. They don't like that. But this was just a super fun church that we were walking up to go see that we had found in Arizona. This one on the right was also from our spring break trip. Okay. How many people like this? Put in the chat. If you want to camp like this, my daughter got up. This was our campsite. You can't see my RV. You can see kind of the outdoor kitchen sticking up. We had it. We had a fire around that every night. Those trees behind you, they, they were actual orange and lemon trees. And they gave you pickers that were this, like you can't see, this long. And you could go around on anybody's campsite and pick from their trees because they actually belong to campground. So the kids would make homemade lemonade at night. They had a double decker campsite. There was actually a TV and grass turf on the top. And but we if we ever go back to Arizona, who's in Arizona? You got anybody in Arizona, Tara? All right, if they put in the chat, they're in Arizona. This is the place to go and ask for the double decker because there's only like four of them. We lucked out, y'all. I didn't plan this. I literally booked it like a week before we left and I got the best spot available. Now I know to ask for it. Um, but that, oh, it even had a dog park with a gate, like a personal dog park just for us right behind you can see that little gate. So these are the types of things. This is so much more fun than a hotel. Like my kids would wake up to see the sunset and I'd find them asleep on the turf on the top. Like how cool is that? So you guys, I just wanted to share, um, what is the RV Mama of Four Adventure and Community? Well, I don't want you guys to wait because you don't know what is around the corner. If you notice in a lot of my pictures, I only have two kids, just like my husband. I don't wait around. Who's ever available? Off I go with them. 
So sometimes it's one, two, four, sometimes it's me, sometimes the whole family. But as your kids get older, they have more activities. And a lot of times as they're teenagers, they just want to hang out with their friends. As you get older, you don't know what health issues are lying around the corner. There is no better time than right now. Like right now, if you are excited and this is something that you think that you could do, whether it be one weekend a year or three weekends a year or some, it doesn't matter, you guys, it really doesn't. A lot of what we talk about in the membership and community is, do you rent or do you buy? What size RV do you get? What type of RV do you get? What do you put in your RV? Um, how do you hook up your RV? I just talked with somebody a couple hours ago. I'm going to be driving down to Glenwood Springs to teach her how to drive her RV. I do RV backing and driving lessons. Um, and, you know, I'll just turn it into a trip if you're in Colorado. <laughs> I'm like, come on, kids, off we go. And so um, there's just, but this particular adventure and community membership is online. It's virtual. I do a meeting every week where we have a topic that's relevant to, you know, you know, kind of in order of where my people are, where my members are at. And then you can ask questions and you also have access to me. So if you're at the campground and can't figure out how to hook up your sewer or your water is not where you thought it was going to be, or, you know, your AC is not turning on, you can call me because the majority of the time, it's something that I've been through. I think everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, except I've never hit anything. Not <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? That was the worst thing to ever say in the world. Oh my gosh. I take it back. But other than that, like, you know, I put my cord in upside down and I know lots of girl tricks that caught on fire. We're like, what does that smell? Well, come to find out it has a little notch. And so the guy told me, put nail polish on it. Okay. Never forget nail polish, you know, goes up. Now I know when I'm backing out my RV, I put a ponytail holder. Usually I'm wearing one, but I'll dress up for y'all today. Um, so I just take it out of my hair. I put it on the ball and then I can see it better because the backup cameras are always gray, dark, and shadowy. So we have all kinds of tips that you can do by yourself. Um, raising and lowering the jack. A lot of people will be like, oh, the tension is so tight. I can't lift it as a girl. I have tricks for that too, you guys. Um, so that's the type of thing that you're going to learn in the community and that you have access to me so that I can help you start your own journey. So this is um, what you get in the membership. And this is my special offer for everybody that's staying around. So normally my monthly membership is $49.99 in a month and my three months is $99 a month. But just for you guys for joining this webinar, you can be you can access the membership and become a member for only $29.99 a month. You can cancel anytime and I promise my feelings won't be hurt because this is a this is something that I want you to learn and get out and do. This isn't something where you, you know, unless you really get in and enjoy the community, which happens a lot too. You make friends and you want to stay and it's super fun. But you'll get that price for as long as you stay. And then if you decide to do the quarterly, $59.99 is really low. You're getting, you're getting at least a month free, but I don't really do math right now. So it's whatever, that's close. Maybe Tara can put in the chat how much you're saving, <laughs> but you're saving a lot because it's normally 99. Um, and then if you want to do annual, you're also getting a break on that. It's $290. So you guys can look at that, or you can go to my website, rvmama, M-A-M-A-O-F-4.com. And this is all there. Um, so um, I also have a QR code and I think you can scan it directly from the computer. Yes, you can. Cause I have super cool friends that are techie. And if you think I made that QR code, you, you probably don't know me very well. <laughs> um, so the link is in the chat, you guys, and, um, you can sign up for that. So there's my logo. It was actually hand-drawn by my son while I slept on a plane to Florida. Sometimes kids can really come in handy. I was like, look, honey, this is what I want. And he made it before we even arrived. And so we would love to have you in the membership. So I wanted to, um, how are we on time? My computer doesn't show what time it is. What time is it? Um, it is okay, 8.47. I'm more... So you still got about okay. 15 minutes-ish. So I wanted to, um, thank you. I wanted to see if we have any questions um, or I also have some tips for RVing on a budget because I know I mentioned that we would talk about that. So let me just give you a couple tips on RVing on a budget and then I'll open it up to questions in three minutes. Can you tell me when it's 6.50? Okay, if you wanna start putting your questions in the chat, it can be about anything, anything that we've, you know, whatever you want, you start putting them in the chat and, and Tara and Shari can help me out and tell me what you said. So if you're worried about, like I was gone last summer, pretty much from June to October, 
Um, and people are like, oh, I don't have enough money to do that. I want to do, I'm like, look, I am not loaded. Let me tell you when I am still paying student loans in my forties. Um, so what we would do is on travel days, we would stay for free at Walmart, Cracker Barrel, Love's Pilot, Flying J. Sometimes I stayed on the pool out on the side of the road. Like I love pool outs in Colorado. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's where they put all the snow and the snow guy comes and shovels all the snow there. But in the summer, you can just like stay. And I love it. And people are like, are you scared? I'm like, no, I got the place to myself. I don't have any trucks coming in. It's just me. Nobody can fit around me. You can also stay at rest stops. Um, and, you know, if you're staying to Walmart or somewhere, I always call ahead and ask a manager if it's okay. Because as of now, um, some, place, some of the Walmarts do and some don't. Loves actually has RV spots where you can reserve ahead now with hookups. Loves is a gas station. They don't have them at all locations, but you can find them on their app. Walmart is free. We always park in the back of the lot. You don't have to wake up early and you can go in and get groceries. So on our travel days, we almost always stay free. Why? Because I drive late. Uh, you're not supposed to. If you join my membership, I'll tell you the 333 rule, don't drive late. So it's like I tell my kids, do what I say, not what I do, right? But we're, <laughs> we do often drive late and um, Walmart is nice because I can sleep in, people aren't bothering me and I can go get groceries. Um, Cracker Barrel is another one. If your RV is not too big, mine is too big for Cracker Barrel, but we love Cracker Barrel and it fit up to my 32 foot and then we could get breakfast in the morning. Um... And let's see, Harvest Toast is another free option with the membership. Um, if you join my membership, I can share a lot more of this with you, but Harvest Toast is another great way to save money. We're actually staying at one on Friday when we move out because I don't have, I just don't have, I didn't, I don't know, I'll read the star. But <laughs> I'm like, we're going to stay for our first night full-time RVing boondocking, kids. Aren't you excited? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, you can join a camping club with Thousand Trails, Passport America, all of these things we'll talk about. So if it feels a little overwhelming, it's just because I want you to know that you can do this on any budget. You can be rich, you can be poor, and we have seen everybody in between. Our neighbor in Breckenridge actually had a chimney smokestack coming out of his school bus. I kid you not. And then on the other side, it was a $300,000 motorhome. And you know what? They're all people. We would run into them. I couldn't tell you which was which. And they all had stories and it was so cool to be able to relate to people that you might not normally relate to. I mean, I'm not usually running into too many people that live in a school bus, but up in Breckenridge, I was, I had multiple people that I met that lived in a school bus and were pretty cool. Other than, um, you know, some, sometimes you get, sometimes you'll have it, things be a little weird, but we, we've never had any safety issues. People ask me all the time, are you scared? I, I have never had a safety issue where I felt scared yet. Okay, I'm going to give you one last tip on that, and then I'm taking questions. Um, what I do, because I know safety is an issue for women, I keep bear spray next to my bed. You can use wasp spray, anything that has like a, psh, you know, it's not like, toot, toot, it's like, psh. so that's what I do, and I lock my door, and that's it, and I've never had any issues. The RVing community is literally like when we were growing up. You know, you, somebody falls roller skating down the hill, the neighbor picks them up and sends them on their way to mom. That's how they are. You can't back up. Somebody will say, oh, you know what? Um, let me um, let me just jump in and do it for you. I can't tell you how many men have driven my truck. I don't, I even actually had a homeless person once, but I didn't know he was homeless till after. And I always give my kids out and I give them the once over, make sure they look good. We haven't had that many problems, you know, that, that was back early on, but you do what you need to do. You know, you make do, and that's why I can't recommend my membership more than enough. Not, it's not that I just want everybody to join. It's because I want you to enjoy this lifestyle and I don't want you to have problems and I don't want you to be overwhelmed because we can take out a lot of it. Um, oh, Shay is at an RV camp and wants us to show her on camera. Sorry, I can't see the chat, Shay. Okay, let me see. Are we allowed to talk? Because it is question time. I am done. Okay, I just had to show you that the timing of our little day trip with your webinar. I am at an RV camp. I do not have an RV, but to, I just can you see this? Here's we can. Hookup. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's beautiful. So it's like twenty bucks a day here so it's totally like doable if you have um 
an RV. I just had to share. I'm in Island Park, Idaho. So we're just about an hour south of Yellowstone. So this is really cool when I get an RV one day, but we may just come up here to camp. So I just had to share. I'm so glad that you did, you guys. And this is your time. You can share away and ask questions. And Shay, I have not been to Idaho. So girl, you know, I have you on my list to just come and visit because that is beautiful. And we have stated a lot of like, if you are looking for cheaper places, state and county campgrounds and Army Corps of Engineer are going to be your best friends. If you're looking for actual camping and not just like travel stops. Um, and but Jody this is a national park. We're in a national park. So when you're talking about national parks, like it, this it's is another so cool. one. Yeah. And what is the name of your national park you're at, Shay? Uh, this is Targi National Forest. Oh, wow. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited. We get to have some live action last week on our weekly member call. Two, <laughs> I know. Like, this is so Two um, at their RV timing. out front. It is perfect <laughs> timing. Look at that lake. Are you staying there? No, we're not. We just came up for the day, but we may come back and stay over just not in an RV yet because we don't have one but yeah it's and gorgeous you can rent one <laughs> I can help you with yeah. that too rentals is another big thing we talk about in the membership of should I rent should I buy how do I rent what do I do how much should I pay how do I plan all those things because we can narrow it down and make it easy but Shay that is gorgeous thank you for sharing um okay well who, what else do we have going on in the chat guys do we have any other questions not yet. All right. I know y'all have questions out there. You can either unmute or you can put them in the chat, whatever's easier. I usually can talk faster than I can type. So you can unmute too. I see Cindy in Hawaii. Hi, Jody. I see all kinds of people. All right, Tara, do you have any questions for us of things that you wish you knew when you started? Um, no, actually, I think I think, well, I do agree that if you have somebody that goes ahead of you that, that helps with some of the YouTube, um, and oh, I don't know if that's my internet. Is that my internet? Am I You're there? back. Okay. You're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are at an RV park and I have Starlink, but I, I'm <laughs> not a, I am a glamper to the T. Like I need my internet. I need my phone. I need my TV at night. Like all the things so my husband loves the outdoors in the national parks and i go okay we can go into the park but we are staying at <laughs> an rv resort and i know a lot of you guys can relate to that um jen and cindy have all mentioned that to me as well and you know what i'm like that too that's why you know i love all of it i really do i love so many I love the natural side of it. I love the boondocking. And then I also love having the hookup sometime. And when you get the hookup again, after boondocking, you're like, oh my gosh, this is heaven. <laughs> I just plug in and I have water and all this stuff. Um, but it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. What about you, Chris? What do you, what do you wish that you knew or that you can share with people that you think would be really helpful when they're just have the vision, the dream or, you know, can I do it? I think the easy answer to that is yes, you can. But I mean, really just go do it. It's uh, it might be intimidating at first, but it ends up being a lot easier than you think it is. And there's so many YouTube videos and Facebook groups and books. There's all kinds of stuff out there to provide you insights uh, when you run into and you will when you run into an issue. And uh, I'd say <laughs> if, if you're if you're full timing, you're probably looking at at least one issue a month. Um, but don't let that scare you <laughs> off. Just use it as a learning experience. Um, you know, it, 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 it's all part of the fun actually. And then you feel really accomplished when you, when you fix something or, or make something right. Um, all the way from like your tire pressure monitors, all the way up to toilet gaskets. And those are two that are <laughs> on the top of my head. Cause I yep. just dealt with both of them. So <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. And I'm looking forward to yours tomorrow night, you guys. So this is a three day virtual summit. So Chris is on screen right now, at least on my screen. Um, he is last man camping and um, Chris is going to be sharing with you 
all kinds of tips on how you can do some DIY and some maintenance yourself, what to watch out for. I'm really excited for this because, you know, since I travel generally solo with my kids, I just call mobile RV repair. Um, I've just now had a lot of things happen over eight years. Pretty much. It seems like almost everything that I do know how to fix a lot more now. I do know how to fix a lot more, but you never know all of it. And so I love, it's one of the things that I love from all my guy camper friends is a lot of times they just have a knack for that. Um, and I don't mean to be like gender specific. It just happens a lot of times where they just really have this knack of they, you know, they know how to fix this or that. So oftentimes they'll help you do it. They'll come on into the trailer. We've had a lot of people in our RV and you know, they just help you fix things. And so, so definitely join in tomorrow, same time, whatever time you started tonight. Cause I know we're all in different time zones from Hawaii to East coast. It'll be here tomorrow as well. And then on Wednesday, we would love to have you guys back to hear from Tara with that fabulous map behind her. And they are in Hershey, Pennsylvania in an RV right now. Um, Chris and I are in our houses, but Tara is on her six month road trip. She travels for six months and you guys, hers is going to be really unique. She is going to teach you how to make a passive income to support your RV lifestyle, because you know what? you still need some money, right? And, and they're actually not, they're, they're actually doing that to be able to support going out on the road and making all these memories. So she has so much to share too. And we will be sending out a replay. So that if you missed some part of tonight, you can catch it. And if you've missed some links in the chat or anything, my website is rvmamaof4.com. And you know what? I am so glad that you guys are here. We have time for one last question. All right. Who wants to be the person who's got one last question? Jen says she can't go solo. Go ahead, Cindy. No, um, you know, I, I live in Hawaii. We don't have RVs here. I know nothing about RVs, but I just want to say Christine has been such uh, a help with um, telling me all about it. And I know that um, I'm going to have so much fun when we go for our first RV trip in October. Thank you, Cindy. That was really kind of you. Cindy's in my, in my membership now and she is such a go-getter and she has several trips planned. And so I'm thinking that was really kind of you. Um, and she does Juice Plus, that fabulous plant in the back. So if you need any Juice Plus or Tower Gardens, reach out to Cindy or me and I'll tell you how to reach her. Um, but lots of people are saying that they don't want to go solo. You guys, that is okay. I would say I'm kind of more rare in that regard. I'm not a very fearful person. I just like, whoo, off I go. And then whatever happens, happens. But that's not really that common. And that's okay. Like I said earlier on, you can even learn say you just want to go with your kids one time, the more you do it with your spouse or the more you learn, the easier that next jump will be. And there may be a time where you're like, wow, I just want to go 45 minutes down the road with my kids. Can I do it? Yes, you can, because you'll have learned it, you know, um, before that. And lots of people like, like uh, in Tara's situation, she travels with her husband. If you, do, if you learn how to drive, um, the RV or even how to do the sewer and the water and all that, you can help your spouse. If something hurt, you know, if they get hurt or injured, God forbid, or if you just want to get somewhere faster and they can drive three hours and you can drive three hours, you know, just situations like that too. So you don't have to go solo. Um, don't worry. I'm not going to pawn that, <laughs> that dream off on everybody else. <laughs> I won't make you do that. If you come join the membership, I promise. Oh yes. And Shari says she's hitching a ride. I'm actually hosting an event in Kansas with Sparkle RV and um, it's called Annie Oakley, get your guns. And we have Dutch, Oak, Dutch oven cooking and all kinds of goodies. So Shari's coming with me. Um, and my mom and sorry, sister. And so, yeah, you'll have to check out my website for the events page. I'm going to post that one tomorrow, but yeah, we, we're glad you guys are here. Do we have any last words in the chat, Tara? Um, only that people want to do it. So oh, yay, because I'm so excited it. you guys. I love it too. I love it. Well, you guys, your time is valuable. We are grateful for you. I know that we all have busy, hectic lives. Thank you to my friends, our family, all of our friends and family and supporters. And if you want to learn more, reach out to us. Shari will put in the chat um, my website um, or my email, rvmama4 at gmail.com. <laughs> and, um, and then I can also get you in touch with Tara and Chris, but you'll also get all their information tomorrow. If you didn't catch it in the chat, we will make sure you connect with whoever you want to. So thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful night and I look forward to talking with you all. And you can jump on our website if you um, need more information or to contact me. Okay, guys. Bye. Have a great night.